Okay, somebody asked me to do a standard atlas walk around of my atlas on YouTube. This is my attempt. The car is not clean because it's winter, but there's plenty of salt on the road, so it's just going to be a dirty walk around. This is my collection of documents so far. I'm interested in anything you may be able to offer that I do not have or anything you think I might need more of. The only thing I know I'm missing is a standard atlas jack, period. I'd be very interested in buying a standard atlas jack. This atlas is a 1960 standard atlas with the 948. It's one of the early designs known to be very slow. It's got the optional windshield wiper on the passenger side. Actually, this van has every option available at the time. I know that the bumper should not be painted. It should be chromed with the front grille. That was done when it was found in the fields of England. I've purchased these mirrors. They're vintage mirrors. Door is pretty basic, pretty solid. Doesn't close like a car, definitely feels like a commercial vehicle. And this door handle locks from the inside. It does not lock from the outside. The windows. Just slide like that. <laughs> Don't produce a whole lot of air. But the cigarette window, or whatever you got, I can't remember what you guys call it in England. Uh, we'll turn all the way around. That's a nice blast of air going down the highway. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> the starter handle is quite long to go all the way back to the engine, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's got a nice partial sh shelf. And the instrumentation is Smith's. Very similar to a Austin Metropolitan, Nash Metropolitan. Turn signal flasher, heater, optional heater, the wipers, and the lights work just like any other Triumph or standard. Optional heater, which is hooked up, but I have not used. Washer bottle, the foot pedals. Gas pedal is a rolling pin gas pedal. The car came with one seat, the second seat is optional, and it's adjustable. You lift it up and put it into a different slot. <laughs> There's the stick shift, the engine's from a Herald 948, and the transmission's very similar. The firewall for the cargo. <laughs> the gas cap is not original Herald. I do need to get one of those. It's a locking gas cap. I'm guessing it's probably aftermarket, at least as far as I know it is. The optional side door. Pretty heavy, no springs. <laughs> it swings all the way back. To the catch right here. I put this on here because if you walk through and hit this in the garage it, it hurts. Anyway it just catches right there so the door doesn't blow. The circle right there is a jacking point for the rear. And a jacking point for the front. Again, if you guys know of any jacks for Standard Atlas, I'd love to know. <laughs> Typical 13-inch wheels. There was a, a wheel upgrade that lets you carry it a little more weight. Obviously, these wheels 
<laughs> are not from the 60s. Cargo area. Parcel wall. I've installed a seat in the back. My wife wanted a cargo, I'm sorry, a camper van. Obviously, you can't find atlases anymore, so you take what you can get. I was very happy to find this one. I know up here, this has been redone. The vent for the cargo area. I would sure like to see a picture, if anybody has one, of what it originally looked like. There must be a lip up here to keep the water from coming in. This is the back of the van. It has the optional bumpers. Very lucky to have those. Typically on the back of the car I have speed limit bumper stickers. Telling people I can't go over 45 miles an hour, which is actually incorrect. It's 52 miles an hour. <laughs> Generally. Plenty of cargo area in this. It does feel like it could hold a lot of weight. I just put carpet in here for the kids. Sitting in the vehicle, very comfortable. Steering wheels are typical Triumph. Steering wheel at the time, works the same. I think the plastic's just a little bit different to make it an Atlas. But the internals are all the same. There's a plug for the hydraulics right there. And this is the emergency brake, which is just like a Tonka truck handle. <laughs> you just yank it up. Again, adjustable seat on the driver's side. You just lift it up and just put it in a different slot. Behind the driver is the battery. The fuel line. Go to the fuel tank, which is underneath the vehicle on that side. The starter and the choke. No need for a key in the Atlas. The engine's right here. It's actually fairly quiet, believe it or not. It does get a little bit warm. 948 in there. Nice and snug. <laughs> a ton of room. But it's a pretty basic vehicle. That's an extra water bottle for the radiator I installed. That's not standard, but it is a Triumph part. So, And the fan is off of a newer Spitfire. I just wanted more cooling. I'm in a pretty high altitude, and I go up mountains, so anything I can do to improve the cooling. I do have the original part, though. To work on the vehicle, these access panels come off on both sides, gives you a lot more access to the engine. Not a whole lot of sheet metal up there if you got an accident. Access to the brake master cylinder is through the front grille. You remove the two bolts, and you can check the master cylinder. Underneath the vehicle, steering gear, brake and clutch. There's an intake for the air to go up into the engine. This huge spring 
makes the car the most enjoyable triumph to ride in. <laughs> it's like bouncing on one of those toys you had as a kid that were filled up with air, big bouncy toys. I've been told that it's probably smoother with the truck fully loaded. But I have not tried it yet. Back here is pretty basic. Just the sheet metal from the parcel department. Transmission. The downpipe to the muffler is incorrect. I'm hoping to get it fixed before this, this season. The back end's just your typical solid rear axle with crazy gearing. Again, if anybody knows where I can get more spare parts, a jack, or any literature that would be of interest, please don't hesitate to contact me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Cut.